morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the Word is explained. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? I said, are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on this morning? Yes, he's so worthy, amen. Hallelujah, come on and give him a hand praise this morning. Yes, come on and give him a hand praise on this morning. Yes, we want y'all to stand up and stretch out. Kick off the whole week. Shake it off. We're going to praise the Lord in here today. Hallelujah. Lord, we're going to give him everything. Everything that we think that we're just going to give it to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, we just thank you for allowing us to come together one more time in the house of the Lord, giving you all the praise and all the glory. And it doesn't matter how much we give you, you deserve so much more, God. Because you are here, you are here all with us, Lord Jesus. Every day, every moment, you're right here with us, omnipresent, God. We thank you and we lift your name high. We lift your name high because you are so worthy, so worthy, God. Glory to your name, wonderful name, Jesus. say amen hallelujah come on give him some praise hallelujah he's so worthy amen yes he is glory to your name God
shackles, you made you loose loose my shackles and you said you made how you made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness into you day.
lift anybody up in here. Hallelujah. Old things passed away. All things, behold, all things have become new. Hallelujah. You changed my life. Complete. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I look back over my life, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the Fellowship of Faith Church, where Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. I am standing here this morning on behalf of the women's department. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. I'm standing on behalf of the women's department where Sister Tessa Dixon is the leader of the women's department. Sister Tessa, raise your hand. That's Sister Tessa back there. And so we are encouraging every lady that is a member of the Fellowship of Faith Church. And even if you are not a member yet and you are still seeking, but you're here, hallelujah, you too are welcome to become a part of the Women's uh, Fellowship. And so we have a group me. And if you are not a part of that group me, let myself know, Sister Tessa, Sister Mary over here, she also can let you in. Um, so let us know that you need to get in and we'll get you in so that you can get all of the messages. We meet every first Saturday at noon, every first Saturday at noon. Amen. So we're going to have our announcements come out.
and she does such a great job. I really enjoy her so much. Don't forget, if you have signed up for the Christmas play, we're going to meet um, over here on this side. I promise I won't keep you uh, for about 15 minutes this week. Next week, it'll be different, but this week, it'll be about 15 minutes. Amen. Do we have any birthdays? Just turned 25. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. Anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Amen. Everybody say happy birthday. Do we have any anniversaries? Woo! Woo woo! Amen. How many years? Listen. I'm gonna come down there and y'all just lay hands on me. I just need 57 seconds, okay? Seconds. Amen. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Enjoy your day. May the favor of the Lord just drop all around you all day today. And you're gonna be that your mouth gonna be open because God is just gonna open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to receive. Amen. So now this is my favorite part. I have a friend, and I love her so much. Uh, she is somebody's prayer warrior. Uh, she is an encourager. Um, the word is down in her belly, and it's just like fire. We we pray every Saturday morning, and when she's missing, we show sure do miss her. But when she speaks up, she is so encouraging, and I know that if you've been here any length of time, you already know her and you already are looking forward to the word that's going to come out of her mouth because you know it's going to bless your life. Uh, Dr. Jones is her name. Amen. And we love her and we honor her today. So if everybody would just stretch their hands toward her and say, woman of God, preach the word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and I'm so excited to see what God is going to do through all of us today and to all of us today and with all of us today and at all of us today and in all of us today and through all of us today that I don't know how you're going to leave out of here the same way you came in, and so I'm kind of excited. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. I thank Pastor Troy so much for this opportunity to share the word of God. And what I'd like for you to do, first of all, is just go into a word of prayer with me. Lord God, we just praise and thank you for who you are. We honor you as the Lord of our life. We thank you so much, Lord God, that for all the mistakes we make and all the many times that we fall short, that you love us unconditionally, Lord God. We are so thankful, as was sung this morning, that you are faithful. Lord God, we know we're not always there, but Lord, we know you are always there. We're so thankful that you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, Lord God. We thank you so much for Pastor Troy. Thank you for blessing us with him as our pastor. We pray that you speak through him as he's preaching in another area today. We pray safe travels for he and Lady Kim on their way back. And Lord, we just pray for your blessings to just pour upon Pastor Troy, Lady Kim, and Tori, Lord God. We pray for the Fellowship of Faith Church, Lord God, to be the church that you've called it to be. And Lord God, we are just praying right now for this time. Lord, for those who are virtual, for those who are in this building. Lord, we just want to pray that not one person misses the message that you have. Lord, we pray, Lord God, right now that there's a full concentration on you. Lord God, we speak against all the distractions of the world. And Lord God, we just pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, Lord God, to just open up their heart, open up their mind, open up their soul, and just to receive, Lord God, what you have for each one of us to learn, for what you have for each one of us to grow from, and what you have for each one of us to just let resonate within our bodies and within our minds and within our spirit. We love you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you just speak through me. And 
and just allow me to be your vessel today to be used by you. We just give you the glory, give you the honor, and give you the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to dive into this word. Um, you may have, hopefully have your handout today, and if you don't, you can see on the screen that we're going to be talking about change. And oftentimes when it comes to change, we don't like it. We like to stay like we are. We get comfortable in where we are, and we want to just be like we are. And we don't want to be any different. We just want to just kind of be just the way we are today. I'm comfortable. Don't mess with me. Don't, don't, don't try to change up anything because I like things just like they are. Well, the message that God gave me was change. It's time. It's time for each one of us to make some changes in our lives. And I love the way God kind of orchestrated this. It's kind of different in the way that he gave it to me. And the first thing that we're going to do is look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and we're going to look at verse 16. No matter what version you have, it doesn't matter. You'll still get out of it what God wants you to get out of it. And what we're going to look at in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16 he lets us know in this particular verse that we do not, we should not lose heart. He wants us to know in change and making a change in our lives that we, he doesn't want us to lose heart. He doesn't want us to get weary. But if you look in verse 16, he tells us that even though our outward man, the beginning of it was, therefore, we do not lose heart. But even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. So he's letting us know as far as who we are that these outside bodies that we have that change all kinds of shapes, forms, and fashions, and weights, all of that that is definitely going to perish. However, he's letting us know at the ending part of verse 16 that our inward man, our spirit man, our inner being is being renewed every single day. That's truly who we are no matter what somebody, somebody else might tell you, no matter whether or not you look the way you want to look, what we're needing to be focused on is our inner man. And he's letting us know at the end of verse 16 that our inner man, our inner being, our spirit man is being renewed every single day. And that's truly who we are. And that's what we want to focus on as we go through each day and during this time of study right now. The second part of that is what is God's plan for you, 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 and those are, who are out there virtually. And what we're going to do for that is look at Jeremiah. And we're going to look at Jeremiah. Many of us have seen this verse many a times and look at this, looked at this particular verse many a times. We're going to look at Jeremiah chapter 29, and we're going to look at verse 11. And then what we're going to do here is look at four different things in this particular verse. If you look at Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, I'll just read it. He says, for I know, God is letting us know, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. That's the Lord telling us that. He's letting us know these thoughts that he has for each one of you in this building and each one of you virtually. These thoughts are of peace and not of evil to give us a future and to give us hope. Now, when it comes to changing and change its time, he's letting us know that he has a plan for us. He has an agenda for each one of us. I know we have an agenda, but he's letting us know that he has an agenda for each one of us. And that's the agenda we want to be living out in our lives. That's the agenda we want to be following in our lives. And he's letting us know in this particular verse, not just that, he's letting us know that he's with us. And he's letting us know that these plans, they're not bad plans. The one God has for us, they're not bad at all. Now, we might not like them. We may not enjoy them. We may not want them. He's letting us know these particular plans are some good plans. These plans that he has for us are good, and it's for our future. He's letting us know, I've got an agenda for you. He's letting us know, I'm going to be with you. He's letting us know these plans are good. And then he's letting us know these plans are for your future. And that's the part that we want to hold on to as we go through this particular lesson, because the thing about it is there's a lot of things that a lot of us go through every single day. And the first go through that we're going to talk about is when we get off course. There is a course in, obviously if God has a plan, there's a course. There's a course in this particular plan. And what we're going to do is in looking at getting off course, we're gonna look at Psalm 119, and we're going to look at verse 105. We're going to look at Psalm 119 and verse 105. But before we do that, Psalm 119 and verse 105. Now, what I want to talk to you about about this, even though I wouldn't do it, I want to picture yourself in a dark 
forest, dark woods. I would never be outside in the woods by myself at night. However, I just want you to think about it. I just want you to imagine it. I want you to imagine yourself in a dark place, dark, dark woods, dark forest. And I want you to think about, we're not going to talk about all the things that you would need, but we're going to talk, talk about the most important so you can get through this forest. So you're in the woods or you're in the forest. It's dark. You're going to make sure that you have light so you can see where you're going. And not only are you going to make sure you have light, one of the problems with these woods that you're in is really dark. One of the problems with it is there's trees, and trees have roots, and eventually the roots come above the surface. So what you want wanting to do while you're in this darkness, while you're in these woods, while you're in this forest, you wanted to make sure that you don't stumble over one of those tree roots. And that's why you have your light. Another thing about this forest and these woods that is so dark that you're in, you wanted to make sure as you're walking there's not a hole. Because if there's a hole, you'll kind of fall into it and you'll fall over. And you don't want to do that. So there's holes that may be down there that you can't see if it's completely dark. There's tree roots that have come up above the surface that you're not going to be able to see if it's completely dark. So you got to have light to show you the way because, you know, nobody wants to fall. Well, come to tell you, we are currently living in a dark world, all right? This particular world that we're living in is very dark and it's very evil. We don't like saying that, but it is, all right? We were born into it. It's dark and it's evil. And just like if you were in those woods in the dark, you wouldn't have wanted to have fallen over that tree root. You wouldn't have wanted to fall into that hole. Right now, we want to make sure we're not falling into some stuff that we're not supposed to be into. We want to make sure right now we have not gotten off course. Some of you are miserable. Some of you are like, why me? Why, Lord? You're off course. You need to make some changes. So in order for you to get back on course, you've got to do what Psalms 119 and 105 tells you to do. You've got to make some changes. And what Psalms 119 and 105 tells you is that you have got to get the lamp. Now, let me tell you something about this lamp that I never heard of before. Never, God never revealed this to me before. Well, the thing about it, when you think about a lamp, a lamp doesn't give you the amount of light that the ceiling lights do. It's just a little bit of light. And the reason why in Psalm 119, 105, the Lord says that the word is going to be a lamp unto your feet because the thing about it, because sometimes with where we are, we're not really sure as to how to make that, that step to go forward. What do I do first? I know I'm in a messed up state. What do I do first? And what he's telling you in Psalms 119, 105 is the word is going to be a lamp unto your feet. And the reason it's a lamp is because one, we're in a world of darkness, it's evil, and it's going to give you a little bit of light because he wants you to take it one step at a time. Sometimes what we do, we try to do too much, and we go too big, and we go too large. He's saying, I'm going to give you, he's never shown me that before when I've studied this verse many times. He's giving you the lamp because it's just a little bit of light, and he wants you to just take one step at a time on this pathway. He's going to give you it one. But the thing about it, now, you just can't stand there. You can't just wait on the world to move. You've got to make a change. You've got to make that first step. But he's going to give you that lamp of light to, to help you with the, step, the, the steps that you should take. Because a lot of times we don't even know what step we need to take. You've gotten off course. You need to make a change. And he's telling you in Psalms 119 and 105 that this word is going to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He's telling you I'm going to give you just enough light to make one step at a time, and I'm going to light up the pathway as you make those steps. Now, when you're making these steps, you're going to know that you're going in the right direction because it's going to keep lighting up. 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 As you go on this pathway, he's just going to keep lighting it up, lighting it up. Now, when you can't see which way to go, that's not it. You're on the wrong course, okay? You got to get you got to get back on you got to get on the right course. So the word is going to show you the course that you need to take. And that's why we have to be in the Word. So some of us are feeling like we're feeling. Some of us are in the misery that we're in. Some of us are in this, just this 
ugh that we're in because you're off course. And the Lord is telling you today that you need to make a change. And that's the thing that you really don't want to hear, but I'm here to tell you today that you need to make that change because nobody wants to be living in the dark. So you want to keep that in mind. Nobody wants to be living in a place where you can't see where you're going. So the Lord is willing to show you where to go, but he's going to show you through the word. So off course is one thing. Off course is one way that we are positioned that we're sometimes in in the world. And the Lord is saying today, you need to make a change. You need to get on the right pathway. Now, the second thing that I want to show you is on our thoughts. Some of us think some bad stuff. Some of us have some evil thoughts. Some of us have some thoughts that are just not holy is the, is the bottom thing about it. And what we're going to do is look at Romans because the Lord is telling us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, he's telling us about the changes we should be making in our lives. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, and we're going to look at verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and we're going to look at verse 2. So in Romans chapter 12, and when we go to verse 2, if you look right here, he's telling us, do not be conformed to this world. That's what's wrong with our mind, okay? That's what's, that's what's going on. We're trying to do like everybody else and be like everybody else. And he's telling us in verse 2 not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed. Now, this particular transformation that you see right here is about changing the way we think to things that are, from things that are not holy to things that are holy. It's about exposing ourselves to things that are more Christ-like, like Bible study, like the Word, like church, like songs of worship, those type of things, and to just develop a cultivated, a cultivated spirit um, devoted to God is what he's showing us, to just change on a regular basis to be more in, uh, in his image. If you look at verse 2, we see right here we're not supposed to be like the people of the world, we're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And this renewing is where we replace the stuff that, that's been going in our ears, that we've been seeing with our eyes, that are not like God. Replace that with some things that are holy. That's just a quick change that you can make with that one. That doesn't take a whole lot to make that kind of change. You know whether or not you've been watching some stuff you shouldn't be watching. You know whether or not you've been listening to some things you shouldn't be listening to. You know whether or not you've been involved in some things you shouldn't be involved in that's been affecting your mind, affecting your thoughts. You know whether or not you have some thoughts that you just don't want anybody else to know that you're thinking it. And good thing nobody knows about the Lord. That's a good thing. But the thing about it is he's telling you right here in Romans 12 and verse 2 that we're supposed to be going through a transformation. You can't transform without changing. We're supposed to be going through a steadily consistent transformation to be more in the image of Christ, to be the person of God, that to be the person that God has called us to be. Each one of us should be going through some type of changes. Each one of us should be. However, Satan wants you to have some evil thoughts. However, Satan wants you to think about some stuff that you, sh you shouldn't be think thinking about. Satan wants you to have your mind filled with junk and stuff that's just not holy, that would bring God shame. That's what he wants you to do. But here today, I'm here to tell, to tell you, you need to make a change. If you're having those types of thoughts, you need to make a change. If you're off course, you need to change. It's time. If you have those thoughts that are evil, you need to change. It's time. It's just one of those things where you've been talking about that long enough. You need to do something about it today. Today is your, like, do something about it day instead of just talking about it all the time or reading about it. You know whether or not the change is on you that you need to make. You know whether or not that fits you and what's going on in your life. Now, what we're going to look at that you really probably have struggled with is being rejected. Now, this rejection is about a, de a decline you get or somebody just, somebody says you're declined. Somebody says, I refuse when it comes to you, whether it be a job, whether it be a relationship, whatever it may be. This right here, this rejection is talking about that. That lets you know some changes that you need to make. And what we're going to do first is look at 1 Peter 5 and 8. And there's something here that I really, really want to show you that I hadn't seen before. Now, my daughter taught a few years back, and she talked about a lion and what she learned about it. And I did some reading up on that, and we're going to look at 1 Peter 5 and 8 because we're talking about those of you who go through a life experience where you feel rejected, where you've been rejected, just flat out being rejected from whatever it might be. Now, what I want you to do is, in looking at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, 
I'll read it and then I want to show you something. It says here, be sober, be, vil be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion's lion, seeking whom he may devour. Well, let me tell you what I was reading about this lion. First of all, I read a few things. The first thing I read was telling me about how with the lion, because you wonder why lion, because they stay in the grass and they wait. Okay, Satan works the same way, and that's why, he's, that's why lion is being used right here. He's just waiting on what you feel like when you're being rejected. You know how that makes you give that, that real bad feeling? He's waiting on you to get on your low, okay? Because the lion waits, until, waits in the grass until that weak inkling of an animal comes through that's already injured, that's already kind of like not strong at all. The other thing I found out is there's something called lionesses, and those are the women, the, the female lions. And what happens with them, they're a little slimmer. So a lot of times they're the ones that are used in this particular hunting. There's two types of hunting, but in one of them, these women are being used. And when these women are being used, they're slimmer, they wait, and when they wait and see that there's some, there's one, there's an animal kind of weak, looks kind of weak, look kind of, looks kind of scrawny, uh, we're going to go after that one. Well, when it does that, it mauls at, you, mauls at that animal and breaks the neck. And the reason it breaks the neck is because it wants to paralyze the animal. Once it paralyzes the animal, then it can just take it on back to where it goes. Now, what Satan wants to do with you, he wants to break your neck. All right? He wants to break your neck. So you, just, you know how it is when you just say, I just give up. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just weak. I, I, I've, I've had enough, and I've just, I, 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 don't, I don't even want to try anymore. Satan is like, gotcha, because that's like breaking your neck. Because at that particular point, you're kind of limp. You know, you just kind of feel like, you know what, I, I don't even want to get up out of my bed. You know what? I don't even want to comb my hair. I don't even want to put on my clothes. I don't even want to take a bath. I, I'm, just, I'm just done. You know what? I, I've been rejected for the last time. I've had this happen to me, this happen to me. You got a whole list. All these things that have happened to me, and I've just, I've just had enough. Right. Satan is like, gotcha, okay? He's like, gotcha. That's like your neck being broken, and you just, you feel, you may not be, according to the doctor, paralyzed, but life-wise, you're paralyzed, all right, because you don't really want to do anything, all right? That's a scary place to be, and today, I'm here to tell you, you need to make a change, all right? You need to make a change. Don't let yourself be that way. You need to make a change. No, it's, it's, it's not you. You need to make a change. It's not that you're, something is wrong with you. Satan just wants you to feel that way. He has been waiting. He's like, what took you so long? He has been waiting on you to get to that moment to where you feel that low. You know when you feel low. You know when you get to that point where you just don't even want to call up a family member, a friend, or nobody. You just feel like, I can't do nothing. He's like, gotcha. I'm here to tell you, you need to make a change. All right? That means change. It's time. That's your alert. Just like we get alerts on our phone, that's your alert. You need to make a change. It's time. That's 1 Peter 5 and 8. But then if you slip on over to John 15 and 18, the Lord is trying to talk to you while you're in that state of feeling rejected, while you're feeling like, why me, while you're there. In 15 and 18, he's letting you know, I know you might be feeling like the world hates you because you've been rejected, because rejection is a bad feeling. Nobody wants to be rejected. He's letting you know in 15 and 18, hey, look, they hated me. The world hated me. He's letting you know if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. He's letting you know that. So you need to make a change. He's letting you know that right here. And then in 30, Psalm 34, if you go to Psalm 34, I'll look on the screen at Psalm 34, 17 through 19. This is sometimes where you are, if this is you. In verse 17, he's telling you the righteous cry out and the Lord hears you. So he's here, he hears your cry. He knows that you're crying out. Sometimes it can't even come out depending on how low you feel. You feel it in your heart, but it doesn't come through your vocal cords. But he's, he hears you. He's letting you know that. And not only that, this is, this is the, the great part at the end of verse 17. He's letting you know that he's going to deliver you out of not just one trouble, but all those, those troubles. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. He's letting you know that. And then in verse 18, he's saying, not only that, I don't just hear you while you're feeling rejected, while you're, you're just feeling bad. He's letting you know in verse 18, I'm also near 
to those who have a broken heart when your heart is just broken. And he says, I'm going to save you such as, um, and save such as have a contrite spirit, which is crushed. You just feel crushed. And then when you go to verse 19, look at this now. This is your lifting up. In verse 19, he tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he says, the Lord delivers them out of them all. Thank you, Jesus. So he's letting us know. He's letting us know. I am right there with you. I know you feel rejected, but trust me, in the long run, you're going to be just fine. I'm, I know you feel rejected right now, but you'll feel God's mercy. He's letting you know that because Satan wants you to feel bad, but the Lord is letting you know, I'm, I hear you. I'm near you. I'm with you, and I'm going to deliver you out of all your troubles. You need to make that change from where you are to this is what he's letting you know. You need to make that change from that feeling of rejection to what you see right here in Scripture because that's the true one. Now, the next one that I want to get to for you is about being told no. We don't like to be told no. Now, this no is different. This no has to do with when you really, really wanted it, when you really, really wanted that car, that job, uh, whatever that is, you really want it really bad. You thought you worked really hard for it. You've been trying really hard. You've been saving really hard. You've been thinking about it, praying about it, and then you're told flat out no, all right? God says no, all right? Now, what we're going to look at about this particular no, I want to I tell you some things that God gave me when I was studying and he let me know that this no, when God tells you just no, it's going to strengthen you for your future. Now, you're not feeling it right now, but it is going to strengthen you for your future. That's one thing I want to tell you about when God just says no, all right? The second thing I want to tell you about when God just says no, God is letting you know he's in charge, all right? Not you. He's in charge because we, we like to take charge. We're some independent people confident people. And God is just letting you know when he says no, that he is in charge. Okay. The other thing I want to tell you is through God's no is mercy. It also gives us a chance to see God's mercy. Another thing I want to tell you about when God says no, God is letting you know it's his timing and not our timing. That's what God, whew, I thank God for that one. I thank God for that one. I thank God for that one. I had applied for a position and I felt like I was qualified for that position, did all the paperwork, did everything I was supposed to do, interviewed, and the top applicants. And what happened with that, God told me no. And the thing about it is, when he told me no, my first response was, you know how you say, must not be meant to be. We'll say that. When God tells us no, a lot of us will say, must not be meant to be. I prayed about it. God said no, so I'm just going to move on. Well, some time passed, and I hadn't thought about that position anymore. And what ended up happening after time passed, they got rid of the job. Totally got rid of it. Not only did they get rid of it, that particular person was taken out of that job. They got rid of the job, and then they took that person and put them back into a school as a principal. And all I could say was, thank you, Jesus, I didn't get that job. Thank you, God. You know, you never know. You never know. You never know. You never know why God did that. And this is the other part that God showed me that just kind of struck me when I was studying. God told me, Sheila, I know you. And if you had gotten a position from being a principal of a school, if you got a position at any board of education office in Decatur, Athens, Madison City, Madison County, any of them, you wouldn't budge. You would just stay right there. So God told me what I had to do Oh, hallelujah. I had to take my spirit and just go through all those districts. And wherever you might have gone, I had to just tell them, tell her no. 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 All of them. Tell them wherever you go, I had to tell them no, 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 no. Because I knew that I had a plan for you. And I knew that in this plan, I needed you in Chambers County School District. And the only way that I was going to get you to go is if I told everybody they had to say no. They had to all say no. Everybody had to say no. Because otherwise, you wouldn't want to go out. I was telling myself, I'm not going outside of 30 minutes. That's what I said, okay? If it's beyond 30 minutes, I'm not, I'm not even applying for it. And eventually, my, my, the Lord worked through my husband to say, Sheila, you need to apply outside this area. And in doing so, I'm three hours and 30 minutes away. Never thought I'd do that. But God, I just, God just showed me that in my spirit. He, he just, I just love how he designed that. So he did that for me. I don't know who he might be doing that for here. The way he just told me how he just went, shh, 
and just made everybody just go, no, 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 no. Tell her no, tell her no, tell her no, because I got something for her somewhere else. So sometimes what we'll do, we'll try to bust the door down, trying to get in there because that's what we want to do. And God has already said no. He's already said no. You don't have to know why he said no. You just need to know he has a plan for you. And you don't know the plan. So all you can do is stay on course. All you can do is make the necessary changes to stay on course so you can be where God wants you to be, when God wants you to be there. I thank God for telling me no. I thank God for where I am. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I know where I'm supposed to be. I know that, you know, some people may say, well, what are you going to do? Are you moving? Are, are you moving back or are you selling your house? No, we still, let, we still have both house here, house there. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. If God tells you, let me know, because I don't know yet, okay? Because he hadn't told us the rest of the plan. Well, what if my kids have, I'm like, Lord, I'm in a two-bedroom townhome. What if my kids have kids? Where are the grandkids going to go? I don't know. I'm just going to wait and see. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, so I'm such a planner, but right now, I don't know. But I'm, I, I love where I am because I feel like I'm not in control. I feel like God is totally in control of the next. And I don't know what the next is, and that's like a, sort of like an uncomfortable thing for my personality, but for my spirit, I know it's not me because I can't control it, and I can't tell you what, where I'm, where it's gonna, where I'm gonna be in two years, three years. I don't know. I don't know. God hadn't given that. He hadn't revealed it to me yet, but I do know what he made clear to me in the move that we've recently made, so I encourage you, when God tells you no, don't be discouraged. There's some changes that you need to make when God says no. Stop trying to keep pushing in that direction to do that same thing. God's already told you no. I don't know how many times. How many more times is he, is he gonna have to tell you no? How many more times is he, is he gonna have to text it, YouTube it, TikTok it, whatever it, to get you to understand he's trying to tell you no, that's not it. No, hallelujah. He's telling you, no, that's not it. And you need to understand that God does have a yes for you, but it's not in that. All right? It's not in that. All right? And he does have a plan for you, and it's good, but you need to know it's according to his timing, not your own. So don't, don't listen to those people that say, I can't believe they did to you. I can't believe they need to. Don't do that because it was God that told you no. All right? Don't get mixed up in that crowd talk where people are trying to tell you what other people should have, could have, would have done because you're the best for whatever, whatever, whatever. That is not God. If God said no, it's just no. That just, need, that just means you need to make a change in a different direction. That's not it. So you need to understand that. I feel very strongly about that, and I pray you receive that. And the other one that, that I want to talk to you about is being hurt. When people hurt you, that's, that's a serious one when we feel hurt because nobody likes to be hurt. None of us like that. None of us like that feeling of being hurt. None of us like what we go through when we're hurt, and especially you, a lot of times this particular hurt is from people that we love. And so that's really hard to deal with or people that we trust. In Ephesians 4, well, let me go back to Psalms 28 and 7. Uh, Psalms 28 and 7, I want to tell you one thing that I didn't say there. I got too wrapped up in that note. Psalms 28 and 7, uh, what I want to share with you about Psalms 28 and 7 is what I want you to remember when God says no to encourage you, before I go to the next one, is this. The Lord is your strength. That's what it tells you right here in Psalms 28 and 7. And your shield. Your heart, my heart trusted in him, and I am helped. So trust the Lord when he says no. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. So trust the Lord when he says no. So just remember that. All right, so we're going to look at Ephesians 4, and we're going to look at 31 through 32. Ephesians 4, 31 through 32, when you go there or look up on the screen, I'll read it first. Well, I'm going to read it backwards, and I've never done that before. We're going to start with verse 32, and let me tell you why. Verse 32 has to do with when you're hurt, this is a behavior. It's not a typical behavior. Usually when you're hurt, unfortunately, we're in the flesh. And when we're hurt, a lot of times we want to get back. A lot of times we're a mean individual. A lot of times that's when our temper comes out. A lot of times they say, don't talk to her, don't mess with her, because she's, she's, she's real mad right about now, okay? No, just wait a little while, let her cool off. Then you can go talk to her. Well, to the cool off people, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32, starting at verse 32, it tells us no matter what, no matter how bad you were hurt, no matter how bad it hurt you, Ephesians 4 verse 32 says to be kind to one another. It tells us to be tenderhearted. It says go on and forgive them. I know they were wrong. I know it hurt you. I know you can't believe they, would, they said that. I know you can't believe they did that. I know you can't believe they did that to your family. I know you can't believe they did that to you. But Ephesians 4 and 32 is, said, is saying forgive them. You need to make that change. 
Forgive them. Let it go. Let it go. Just, it's not even worth it. Let it go. You've been, you've been tossing all night long. Just let it go. Even as God in Christ, why should you do it? Because he forgave you because you know we mess up. Nobody here is perfect. You know we mess up. We mess up on a regular basis, and yet we hold it against other people. So Ephesians, I told you I'm going backwards, in verse 32 is telling us when you feel hurt, the change that we need to make when we feel hurt is to be kind to other people, to be forgiven towards other people. The thing about it in verse 31 is like the lion we talked about earlier. This is the trick of Satan. When you're hurt, you're like those animals I told you about the lion looks for in the grass. When they're hiding, the weak animal, this is a weakness that Satan is looking for in you. Because when you're hurt, you're down. Okay, you're more emotional. And I tell my girls, you're emotional, your emotions have no intelligence. So if you look at the beginning of verse, that's why people act like they do when they're emotional. If you look at the beginning of verse 31, these are your emotions. When you get hurt, if you don't make a quick change to verse 32, a quick one, if you don't quickly get yourself mentally and emotionally to verse 32 of Ephesians, then you linger in 31. And that's a danger zone, danger zone, danger zone. Verse 31 tells you to let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away with all malice. The thing about it is when you get hurt, that like opens the door to your emotions. That's like a start. And so what happens is Satan goes, oh, you're hurting. Okay, stay right there, stay right there. That's what Satan says when you get hurt. I mean, especially when you hurt real bad, you know, not real bad hurt. Satan is saying, oh, yeah, got you now, got you now. Just stay right there. Don't come out of that. Don't come out of that. And I'm here to tell you, come out of that. Come out of that quick. Come out of that quick. Come out of it. Come out of it. You got to come out of it. You got to come out of it quick because it starts off as hurt. Then you get a little bitter. Okay, I've seen people really change like who they are. It's a pretty scary thing. It's real. It's real because what happens is it just gets worse is what happens to you. So it starts off as a true hurt. Now you're bitter and now you're just evil speaking. And now it's like whenever you come, it's like venom. It's like wherever you go, you're just spreading venom. So I'm telling you that the Lord is telling you you need to make a change. And I'm telling you the change you need to make is to just be kind towards one another, to be forgiven towards one another, um, to, to be tenderhearted towards one another. You just got to let it go. Don't Stop holding on, holding on to it because it's going to hold you down. You just got to let it go is the thing about it. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. And the thing about it is remember that God, as you go through this change, God restores. He can restore any one of us. God restores. He has an unfailing love is what we want to keep in mind and remember. He's compassionate. That's the thing about it. He wants you to, because you think, God, why would you let me be hurt like that? He's, he gives you, God, the way God op operates is a little different from us. In order for you to see his compassion, then you're going to go through a little hurt and some pain. And then you can see how compassionate he is. You can see his unfailing love. You can see he wants to have a true union with you. You can see all that when you're hurt. When everything's lovely, fine, and wonderful, it's a little harder for us to see it because we're on cloud nine. However, when we're down, you can really see his compassion and really see his unfailing love. So that's what he wants us to kind of keep in mind as we go through that period of hurt. And then the other thing that you see that I have on here is... Every time, everything seems to be falling apart, like one thing after another. You know how we say when it rain, it pours. Absolutely. When we go through that period of time, the thing about it, when it rain, it pours is it could be a sign that God is leading you to a better pathway. You're just not see All you see is the stuff that's in your face and what's happening right now. But you don't realize God could be telling you, I've been telling you to let that stuff go. I've been telling you to stop holding on to some things of your past. You got to let it go so you can move forward. You can't walk forward looking backwards, okay? You cannot do it. So he's leading you to a better path. It looks like everything's falling apart. God is trying to get you on a whole different pathway, and yet you're stuck on the fact that, whoa, it's me, because it looks like everything is falling apart. I'm trying to get you to change and look at things differently that's happening in your life right now. So one thing about everything seems to be falling apart could be that God is leading you, leading you to a better pathway. God is trying to tell you to let go of some stuff that you need to let go of. And the thing about it, too, God could just be leading you into something new in your life that you need to grasp that he's trying to show you, but you can't see it. 
because you're so focused on the fact that you feel like everything is falling apart. It's just, it's just like one thing after another. I got a phone call and this happened, and I looked on my text messages and this happened. And then I got another uh, something I read and this happened. And somebody came to my door and this happened. Lord, have mercy, have mercy on me. And the Lord has said, I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you something. There's a change that you need to make. There's a change that you need to make, not your situation. There's a change that you need to make is what God is trying to show you. And what I want you to look at is Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8. In Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8, he says, this is about when you feel like everything is falling apart. He says, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. All right? Not only does he go before you, he is going to be with you. Yes. He is going to be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Don't be distressed. Okay. Everything seems to be falling apart. When it rains, it pours. It feels like everything is going wrong. The Lord is telling you in the midst of it, you need to make a change because right now when you're in it, it feels horrible. You feel horrible. You feel distressed. But when you're in it, he's telling you to remember Deuteronomy 31 and 8. He's telling you to remember that he is the one that is going before you, that he is with you, that he is not going to leave you. He's telling you that he is not going to forsake you. He's telling you do not be fearful. He's telling you do not be distressed. He's telling you this right now. Satan is telling you, be distressed, be distressed, be downhearted, get depressed, do all of that. Want to just take your life out. That's what Satan wants you to do, all right, because he's out to kill, steal, and destroy, right? But the Lord is telling you differently. You need to make a change. It's time. And then relocation has to do with several things. It, none of us like to move usually. There's a lot of packing that goes along with moving. You got to go through all your stuff. You've collected a whole bunch of stuff and you don't, you got to go through all of it and nobody likes all of that. That can be depressing all by itself. And it, when, you, when it comes to relocation, another thing about relocating is it can be very uncomfortable for you when you make any type of changes, whether it's job, your whole family or whatever. It can be very painful for you. And the thing about it is what I've learned in God relocating us is a lot of times he's preparing us for something. We might not know what he's preparing us for, but what I want you to do is look at Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 which you've heard of before and seen many times before. God is preparing us. Relocation. Relocation happens. Some of us try to fight it, just like with my situation. Some of us try to fight it. God is letting us know that I'm preparing you, and there's a move that I need you to make, and I need you to make this move with me and stop trying to stay where you are, which is how I started when I started talking to you tonight, today. If you look at Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 6, if you look at verses 5 through 6, it tells us to trust in the Lord with all our heart. He wants us to have confidence in him because some of us feel like, oh, no, oh, no, Lord, I can't do that. I can't move. I can't move. I can't move. I can't move to another location or I can't move to another job. I can't do anything different. But he's saying, I need you to trust in me with all your heart. And then he's saying, stop trying to understand it. That's why I stop. Stop trying to understand it. Stop trying to figure it out. Why? Why do that? Why do that? Don't do that to yourself. That's how that mental stuff gets started. Stop trying to figure it out. I know you're smart. know you have degrees. know you've been to school. know you read up on a lot of things. know you have a lot of background experience. But God says, could you just stop trying to uh, recreate what I've already planned? I've already got my plan. I don't need your help. All right? God wants me to let you know that he does not need your help with the plan that he has designed for you. You know, when you think about that, that's a beautiful thing, that God has a plan for every single one of us. So then you almost kind of have to wonder, well, then why are we not fulfilling it? Because we aren't fulfilling it. <laughs> because we've gotten off course. Because we've got these evil thoughts. Because we've gone through rejection. Because we've been hurt, okay? Because we've gone through everything, feeling like, feeling like everything is falling apart. Because now we've had to relocate. Whichever one of those it may be, now we're not in the plan that God originally planned for us. And we need to be in that particular plan. God wants us in that, in that plan. If you look in verse 6, my last one here, if you look in verse 6, God tells us in all of our ways, on a regular basis, we need to acknowledge him as our Lord, acknowledge him as our Savior. 
And we need to know that when we do that, he told us in his, in his word that he will direct our path. He is going to show us on this pathway exactly what to do, exactly when to do it, exactly how to do it, exactly what way to do it. He's going to give us all those directions, but he needs us to acknowledge. He tells us to acknowledge him, and he will definitely direct our path. Now, with directing our path, I, don't, I want you to always be sensitive to the Holy Spirit when it comes to, like, changing, making changes in your life. Because I went through an experience yesterday. I love when it's time to teach and things just happen out of nowhere in my life. And so I was getting my car service yesterday, and there's a little gazebo type thing out in the Toyota parking lot area. And I didn't know if I would be sharing this or not. So I just, I just love the way God operates. But anyway, so I'm out there by myself with my materials going over um, scriptures. And another man says, um, I don't smoke. I hope you don't mind if I join you. And I thought, okay. And so he comes out there, and he's sitting out there too. And he talks to me for about, I don't know, two or three minutes, just kind of like, hi, how are you? And he said, so then he stops talking, and then I start reading my scriptures. And he said, so what are you reading? So I tell him what I'm reading, and I tell him what I'm going to be doing here today. And he said, oh, okay, that sounds good. And then he just kind of like started on his phone. And then um, after he started on his phone, I went back to going through my scriptures. And then in a few minutes, whoever he was out, out there with picked him up, came to, came to get him. And so he went to leave. So we had not talked. All I did was say, hi, how are you? He said, hi, how are you? And then I just told him what I was studying. That was it. So it's not, I don't even know his name. If I saw him today, I wouldn't even know him. All right, I just want you to know how the power of God operates. So anyway, so he got ready to leave out of the gazebo, and he said, oh, by the way, with what you're studying, you might want to add Matthew chapter 13 and verse 26. I was like, whoa, that's kind of scary. <laughs> that's kind of scary. Oh, wait, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, I'm sorry. But this, just the way that he, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, just the way that that was out of nowhere. So I don't know what he was doing on that cell phone. So when he did that, of course, I went, because <laughs> I was trying to see what, what was it? What is it, Lord? And so anyway, he said to me, you should add Matthew chapter 4, 24 and verse 13. But I say that to you to say, if you'll just stay on, on the pathway of where God wants you to be and follow what God tells you to do, he can speak through anybody uh, to you. Because like I, he can speak through anybody. I don't even know if that man is saved. You know, I don't know if he's saved. I don't know if he goes to church. I don't know if he reads the Bible. He did yesterday. <laughs> now, I don't know anything outside of that, but I do know that. So Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, I don't know why I'm supposed to, but I'm, I do know why I'm, why I'm supposed to. But I'm going to just add that. They don't have that in the back. But Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13, which this gentleman that I don't know shared with me, says, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just love the way God operates. God wants you to know it is time in your life to make a change. You need to make a change, whether you've gotten off course, whether you've been rejected, whether you've been hurt, whether you're grieving, whatever it may be, whether you felt like everything's falling apart, God is telling you, you need to make a change. Whether your change be to be saved or whether your change be a change in your life to some of the things I shared with you today that you need to make, God has a plan for everybody here. And he wants you to follow through to what that plan is. God wants you to be on the pathway. He wants you to make that step. He's going to give you that lamp. He's going to light up the pathway for you. He just wants you to be on the pathway. You've been off course long enough. You should be tired. You've been off course long enough. You've been, you've been distressed long enough. You've been grieving long enough. You've been tired long enough. You've been down long enough. Today is your day to make a change, to get up, make a change, to get up, make a change, to make that step in the direction where God wants you to be. Make that change. Change. It's time. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Come on, give God praise in this place. It's time to make a change. Give God praise in this place. 
Hallelujah. Give God praise for that word. I said, give God praise for that word. Now give God praise for the preacher. Amen. It's time to make a change. It's time to make a change. The doors of the church are open. If you need to make a change, if you're on the outside looking in, you need to make a change. You need to give your life to Christ. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, or if you're sitting here right now, you need to make that change. The Bible says it's so easy, but if you just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you can be saved. That's how easy it is to make that change. He's waiting for you with outstretched arms to make that change. Now, if you're looking for a church home, you just you, you need to change. You, you, you have to do what you should do. You need a church home. Fresh for faith is a great place to be. And Pastor Troy love to be your pastor. Make that change. Now, if you went through all those seven things that she talked about, and you, and, and you see now, it's time for you to make a change. I gave my life to Christ, but one of those things got me back out into the world. Right where you are, you can come to this altar. We had a the, the intercession here to pray for you. Father, I want to get back. I want to get rid of that bitterness. I want to make that change. The doors of the church open. You can come now as our praise team and give us a song. Come on to Jesus Christ. Amen. in this place. Give him praise in this place. Actually keep our pastor lifted up in prayer as he preached today in Mississippi. Also for traveling grace for him and the family on the way back home. Again, just please keep our pastor lifted up in prayer. Don't forget tomorrow at 11, uh, Brother Charles Tuck, we will be eulogized here at the church at 11 o'clock. So keep the Tuck family uplifted in prayer. Don't forget Wednesday night Bible study at 6.30 right here in the Huntsville location. You can come out in person, or you can watch us on YouTube or Facebook. Again, let's give God praise before we leave. As we leave this place, you can drop your tithes and offerings off on the basket on the way out. The merch machine will be available. Uh, the Christmas play committee will meet about 15 minutes after service. So keep all that in mind. Again, I just want you to give God your best praise. You've been clapping kind of light today, but I said give God your best praise. Oh, I said give your best break. Come on now, I said your best break. That praise that woke you up this morning. That praise that started you on your way. I said, come on, give me your best break. Your best break. Glory to his name, glory to his name. If God can't do it, it can't be done. God can't do it. It can be done. No, God can't change you. It can be done. God can do anything. Now, Father, 
let your people obey your word today and throughout the rest of this week. My prayer is that you would chase them down and overtake them with your blessings. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. You can be dismissed at this time.